You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. The state of the art, the Cathedral of Our Lady of Arabia, was inaugurated under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in Awali. The inaugural ceremony was attended by the personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The new cathedral stretches within 9,000 square meters of land donated by His Majesty the King. Attending the event were members of the royal family, senior government officials, ambassadors, chairman of the board of trustees of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence, Dr. Sheikh Khalid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, Reverend Fathers, religious sisters, and guests. His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa conveyed greetings from His Majesty the King, stressing royal pride in opening the largest cathedral in the Arabian Gulf region. He highlighted His Majesty the King's enlightened vision to foster rapprochement between religions and cultures in line with Bahrain's commitment to promoting dialogue between religions, cultures and civilizations. He affirmed His Majesty the King's keenness on bolstering Bahrain's standing as a civilized country and a pioneering beacon of tolerance between peoples and religions, which turned the kingdom into a model of tolerance and coexistence. His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad highlighted His Majesty the King's support to efforts aimed to foster human fraternity to ensure a better and more prosperous future for all human beings. He reiterated Bahrain's rejection of extremism, violence, hatred, bigotry, underlining the importance of strengthening bonds of cooperation, friendship between all countries and peoples on the basis of mutual respect. He stressed Bahrain's pride in its relations with the church for its pivotal role in spreading the culture of peace and love. His Highness Sheikh Abdullah said that His Majesty the King gifted a land covering 9,000 square meters to construct the cathedral, which reflects His Majesty the King's vision to protect liberties, promote diversity within unity, ethical and religious principles and values. His Highness Sheikh Abdullah hailed the efforts of the government, chaired by the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to foster these values and principles between all social segments in Bahrain, which embraces all religions and sects. He received on this occasion a commemorative gift from His Eminence Cardinal Louis Antonio Tagle, representative of His Holiness Pope Francis. In his speech, His Eminence Cardinal Louis Antonio said he was deeply honored to witness this historic event. His Eminence conveyed the message of Pope Francis of greetings, of peace, and solidarity to His Majesty the King on the inauguration of the Cathedral of Ar. Lady of Arabia. He expressed his gratitude for the contribution of the architecture and people who have collaborated in the planning and execution of this construction, especially during the difficult time of the pandemic. The ceremony began with the National Anthem of Bahrain by the Ministry of Interior Band. His Highness Sheikh Abdullah lit a crystal ball with words such as peace, faith, love, hope, mercy, wisdom, and charity to mark the occasion. The cathedral, which is an outstanding sign of Bahrain's religious harmony and tolerance, has 2,200 seating capacity, two chapels with 80 seating capacity, 800 seating capacity auditorium, and eight confession rooms. For his part, Dr. Sheikh Khalid said it was a historical day to inaugurate the Cathedral of Our Lady of Arabia, expressing pride to have the new place of worship for the Catholic community. Dr. Sheikh Khalid said he hoped that this church will be a beacon of light for many and it will send a message of hope and peace to other worship places in Bahrain. Vicar Apostolic in the Apostolic Vicariate of Southern Arabia and Apostolic Administrator of Northern Arabia, Bishop Paul Hinder, said the opening of the cathedral is a unique and historic event. Bishop Hinder added that he was happy the Vicariate of Northern Arabia Northern Arabia has a wonderful center, which is an architectural highlight in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Meanwhile, Shura Council member Hala Ramzi said that the opening of the cathedral was an important and joyful event. She extended her sincere gratitude to His Majesty the King, who promotes the values of religious tolerance and coexistence, peace, mutual respect between different people and civilizations. In a statement to Bahrain News Agency desk editor at Al Bilad newspaper, Labiba Joseph Faris said that His Majesty the King, following the approach of his ancestors who were devoted to promote the culture of coexistence and acceptance, has made Bahrain a model for equality and love. Labiba concluded by expressing her appreciation to His Majesty the King and to the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, for their policies that benefit both citizens and residents.
the King Hamad. It's it's a message from him, from the 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 all uh, Bahraini. We live in love. We live uh, to respect and accept the others, whatever these others, Christian, Jewish, uh, Hindus, but uh, uh, because uh, the love it's a plant here in this land and from this love we send all love all the message of peace of love from bahrain to all the world let us live always peacefully in the in coexistence with the rulers of the royal family and um, i'm so grateful to the royal family his majesty his Highness and all the Highnesses and Excellencies for always support, supporting the Christians, the Catholic Church and the, all the expats in this small country. And that is my wish. And let Almighty God bless the rulers of this country in abundantly and let this uh, country go, uh, uh, grow much bigger in peace, in harmony, in joyfulness and happiness. And, re and religious coexistence. This is our dream project, as well as, you know, this is the, we are very grateful to His Majesty and Royal Family, because the uh, last 10 years they have supported for this cathedral uh, construction, and as well as, as you know, that uh, His Majesty has given, has a donate, donated the land on 9,000 uh, square meter of this, and now we are, our dream is fulfilled, and all Catholics are very happy and very grateful to His Majesty the King as well as the all royal family. His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work and youth affairs, Honorary President of the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, His Honor Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Crown Jockey Mohammed Abdul Hamid Al Hashmi of Bahrain Victorious, is the champion of the National Day Endurance Championship for a distance of 120 kilometers. In the presence of the President of the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, His Honor Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. His Honor Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad also crowned Jockey Abdullah Al Rawai from Bahrain Victorious in second place and Jockey Isa Al Anizi from the same team in the third place. It is worth noting that Bahrain Victorious grasped all the first places thanks to the great support that the team enjoys from His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad. The organization of the championship coincides with the celebrations of the Kingdom of Bahrain's National Day and the anniversary of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne. His Highness Sheikh Nasser lauded the high levels performed at the championship in addition to the wide participation in competitions between all stables and jockeys, noting that these levels were an incentive to jockeys and stables in the upcoming tournaments. His Highness Sheikh Nasser said that the National Day Championship achieved many goals, mainly the confirmation of the high capabilities of jockeys and stables while participating in various races, which contribute to the continued development of endurance sports. His Highness added that more efforts would be exerted in order to advance the sports of endurance in the Kingdom of Bahrain and reach the set aspirations and hopes. Moreover, His Highness Sheikh Nasser was keen to follow up on all stages of the race, encouraging the jockeys to excel, especially since His Highness directed them throughout the stages of the race. For his part, President of the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa expressed his thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad for his continuous support to advance the equestrian sports in general and endurance racing in particular. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah noted that the distinguished levels showcased at the National Day Championship of Endurance were a clear indication of the great development of this sport thanks to the follow-up and interest of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad and his keenness to provide full support to the stables and jockeys.
الحمد لله على كل حال كاس غالي علينا جميع بحجم اسمه وعيدنا الوطني المجيد يعني فرحة فرحة وطن وإن شاء الله أن هذه الأفراح تواصل وهالمسرات إن شاء الله على المملكة الأداء اليوم يعني عجبني الحقيقة والسرعة كانت يعني ما شاء الله هايلة التنافس كان شديد يبين لك كل واحد حريص أنه يؤدي أفضل ما عنده خاصة في هذا الكاس مو بس الفرسان دماء الشابة اللي عندنا حتى الخيل خيل جديدة فدخلنا طعمنا الخيل بمجموعة أبطال قدامة وخيل جديدة ونفس الشيء فرسان قدامة ذو خبرة وشباب وياهم يتعلمون منهم فاليوم الخبرة والمكسب اليوم مو بس الفوز إن إحنا ضمننا إن عندنا أبطال من الفرسان وأبطال من الخيل الجديدة الحمد لله دائما نطمح على هالشيء هذا والمشاركة كانت عظيمة وإن شاء الله البطولات الأكبر بإذن الله Under the patronage of the first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, president of the General Sports Authority, president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, his Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa, and in the presence of the chairman of the Supreme Authority of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club, his Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and the vice president of the Supreme Authority of the club, vice president of the Supreme Council for the Environment, his Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club organized this afternoon the ninth race of the season, which was held on the cups of his Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa and the cups of his Highness's son. His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Khalid Al Khalifa and His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa, in addition to the National Day Cup presented by the Ministry of Information Affairs. The race was also attended by His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Khalid Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa, a number of their Highnesses, Minister of Information Affairs Ali bin Mohammed Al Ramehi, representatives of the sponsors of the race, and a large audience. On this occasion, His Highness Sheikh Khalid expressed his pride and keenness to continue to support the efforts made to advance the sports of equestrian and horse racing in line with the patriotic and directives of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa, as well as the interest and follow-up of the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, which constitutes a great impetus for the development of this ancient sport and all sports of folklore that embody the authentic history of the kingdom. His Highness Sheikh Khalid also praised the distinguished participation of the various stables participating in the race and the high levels that the participants showed and congratulated the owners, coaches and jockeys who won the first places in the race.
In line with the deep-rooted and historic ties that unite both the leadership and citizens of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the Kingdom of Bahrain and following recent joint efforts to further bolster strategic cooperation and integration across several fields and in accordance with the directives of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, the Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, commenced on an official visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain uh, corresponding to the 9th of December of 2021. During the visit, an official session of talks were held between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, the Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, in the presence of His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Bahrain. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the Kingdom of Bahrain's long-standing partnership and ways to further develop cooperation across various industries and sectors for the enhancement of the two countries and their citizens were discussed. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud also discussed the latest regional developments and affirm the unity of the two peoples and common destiny towards all regional and international issues and developments of common interest and for the interests of the two countries and people as well as the security and peace in the region and the world. Both parties reaffirmed the contents, the contents of the Al Ula Declaration issued on the 5th of January of 2021 which stipulated the full and accurate implementation of the vision of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, which was approved by the Supreme Council at its 36th session in December of 2015 according to a specific timetable and subsequent review. The declaration included consolidating elements of economic collaboration and shared defense and security systems coordinating in a way that enhances the solidarity and stability of the GCC countries and strengthening their role within the region by unifying policy, developing diplomatic partnership with the international community as well as regional and international organizations to promote the growth and development of the GCC states and unity among its members. They additionally exchanged views on regional and international issues of common interest and affirmed efforts to coordinate their policy policy positions to serve the interests of both kingdoms and enhance regional and international security and stability. They affirmed their support for achieving peace in the Middle East and the importance of reaching a comprehensive settlement of the Palestinian-Israeli conflict in accordance with the two-state solution, relevant international legitimacy resolutions, and the Arab Peace Initiative in a manner that guarantees the right of the Palestinian people to establish their independent state on the 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud discussed the importance of continuing efforts to find a comprehensive political solution to the Yemeni crisis based on the Gulf Initiative and its executive mechanism, the outcomes of the Comprehensive National Dialogue Conference, UN Security Council Resolution Number 2216, and in a manner that preserves the unity, safety, sovereignty, and independence of Yemen and rejects any interference in its internal affairs. Both sides also condemned the continued targeting of dignitaries, airports, and vital infrastructure by the terrorist Houthi militia in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. On the Republic of Iraq, the leaders jointly welcomed the success of the electoral process and expressed their wishes for the formation of an Iraqi government that will continue to work towards the security, stability and development of Iraq, eliminating terrorism and prohibiting foreign interference in its internal affairs. The mutual resolution of both nations to the transitional period in Sudan was agreed on, and they reaffirmed support for measures that will achieve security and stability in Sudan and prosperity for its people. On the Lebanese issue, both sides affirmed their commitment to the security, stability and unity of the Lebanese territories and the importance of carrying out comprehensive reforms to ensure that Lebanon overcomes its crises and confines arms to the legitimate state institutions. The leaders expressed their mutual concern that Lebanon must maintain territorial integrity, not harbor terrorist organizations and groups that diminish the security and stability of the region, such as Hezbollah, and swiftly implement measures to curb drug exports that threaten the safety of societies. On the Syrian issue, the two sides reaffirmed that a diplomatic solution is the only solution to the crisis, supporting the efforts of the United Nations and its special envoy in this regard as a conduit to implementing the relevant international resolutions, foremost of which is Security Council Resolution Number 2254, and to preventing interventions that threaten the unity, sovereignty, and ter territorial integrity of Syria, and affirmed their standing by the Syrian people and the need to support international humanitarian efforts in Syria. On the Libyan issue, they stress the importance of reaching a political solution to the Libyan crisis in accordance with international law in a manner that preserves the interests of the Libyan people and the territorial integrity of Libya with the additional aim of enhancing regional security and peace. They also stress the need to withdraw mercenaries and foreign entities from Libya. With regards to Afghanistan, the need to support security and stability in Afghanistan was stressed, as well as a need to prevent the existence of safe havens for terrorists and extremists within the country. The two sides condemned any bad actors targeting Afghan 
refugees in various conflict areas and expressed the importance of supporting relief efforts and humanitarian work in Afghanistan. In this regard, the Kingdom of Bahrain valued the Saudi invitation to meet with the Organization of Islamic Cooperation Executive Committee to discuss the situation in Afghanistan, which will be held as an extraordinary meeting in the Islamic Republic of Pakistan on the 19th of December of 2021. They also stress the importance of cooperation in dealing seriously and effectively with Iran's nuclear and missile file, including all components with penalties that are constructive to achieving regional and international security and stability, emphasizing the principles of good neighborliness and respect for UN resolutions and international legitimacy, and sparing the region from all destabilizing activities. Both parties demand that the interests, security and stability of the countries of the region are taken into account in seeking resolutions on the issue. Both sides affirm their determination to enhance cooperation on all political issues and formulate common positions that preserve national security and stability in both nations, continued coordination and consultations on developments in all bilateral and multilateral forums in a manner that contributes to achieving security, stability and prosperity for the two countries and their citizens and the people of the region and the world at large is one of the great of greatest importance. Then, the second meeting of the Saudi Bahraini Coordination Council was held, co chaired by His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz al Saud, the Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister, and Minister of Defense of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Bahrain, with the participation of the members of the Council from both countries. The two sides reviewed the distinguished outcomes achieved through meetings of the Council's subcommittees and expressed their satisfaction with what was accomplished during the preparations for the meeting of the second session of the Council to achieve its desired goal. In this context, a number of initiatives have been launched that contribute to strengthening consultations and continuous coordination between the two countries' foreign ministries, coordinating positions to counter extremist ideology, especially among youth in both countries, and implementing parallel courses for young diplomats for the preservation and enhancement of communication and cooperation between consular authorities in the two kingdoms. Regarding security and military affairs, both sides express satisfaction with the existing cooperation between the two countries and stress the continuation of joint work between them. In this context, the two sides have launched a number of initiatives that will further cooperation, coordination and consultation in the fields of security and military services as well as enhancing cooperation in the field of cybersecurity and facilitating trade procedures in addition to facilitating the transit of travelers through air and land ports and networking or electronic linking between the concerned authorities and the two countries in a number of fields. Regarding the energy sector of both countries and concerning climate change, the two sides praise the close cooperation between them and the successful efforts of the OPEC plus countries aimed at staying stabilizing the global oil markets. They also stress the importance of continuing this cooperation and the need for all participating countries to adhere to the OPEC plus agreements. The two sides welcomed cooperation in the oil and gas sector and the exchange of expertise in this field. They agreed to open methods of cooperation on international climate policies and to work on emission rather than sources through the application of a circular carbon economy approach the Middle East Green Initiative and by seeking to establish a regional complex for carbon capture, utilization and storage CCUs, to address carbon emissions using an economically stable solution. In addition to cooperation in the field of CCUs and in the associated hydrogen sector, developing technologies related to its transportation and storage and the exchange of expertise to implement best practices in the field of hydrogen was also discussed. The two sides expressed their mutual aspiration to enhance cooperation in the fields of energy efficiency and renewable energy and clean technologies for hydrocarbon resources and to develop related projects in these fields to continue sustainability to the demand of energy supplies globally. They stress the importance of enhancing the trade electricity benefiting from connected energy sector projects and cooperating to stimulate innovation, additionally by applying emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence to the energy sector and developing the incubating environment for it. In the financial services sector, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia affirmed its support for the fiscal balance program of the Kingdom of Bahrain and welcomed the efforts made by the government of Bahrain in implementing the program. The Kingdom of Bahrain welcomed the commitment of the Saudi Public Investment Fund in investing $5 billion in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The two sides discussed a package of major investment projects in the Kingdom and the Council instructed ministers from both sides to coordinate and collaborate on detailed technical studies during 2022 in preparation for final decisions on them by the Council. Concerning the fields of culture, media, tourism and social development, the two sides stress the importance of highlighting the positive image of both countries and strengthening and developing cooperation in these areas. The two nations launched a number of initiatives that will consolidate bilateral cooperation in the fields of education, sports, culture, health and entertainment, in addition to the media. The package included new provisions for working to unify the privileges related to COVID-19 vaccination and testing procedures to facilitate travel between the two countries, additionally supporting the fields of tourism, youth and social development. Both countries committed to furthering the exchange of expertise 
regarding nonprofit organizations, nonprofit leadership, and ways to develop them in both countries. They also emphasized enabling and enhancing investment opportunities between the two countries in priority sectors, such as infrastructure and those which benefit the environment, to achieve the Council's objectives and to strive towards high value investments and value added initiatives. Acting on this, the two sides launched several initiatives to promote the sector of telecommunications, information technology, the environment and infrastructure, and the promotion of investment between the two countries in various sectors. They also stressed the importance of empowering the private sector more generally, ensuring the sector takes advantage of the available opportunities and the diverse capabilities possessed by the two countries and to work on developing expertise. The Kingdom of Bahrain has expressed its full support for the Saudi Green Initiative and the Middle East Green Initiative. On the sidelines of the visit, a number of memorandum of understanding were signed in the areas of cybersecurity, protection of intellectual property rights, areas of standardization and procedures for conformity assessment of biodegradable plastic products. At the conclusion of the visit, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, the Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defence, expressed his thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the King of the Kingdom of Bahrain, and to His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Bahrain, for the warm reception and generous hospitality the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the accompanying delegation received during their stay in the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa also conveyed his best wishes to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, the King of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and for the Saudi citizens for their progress and prosperity. Following talks held between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, the Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and based on the outcomes of the second Saudi Bahraini Coordination Council meeting, co chaired by His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Bahrain, and His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, the Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, it was agreed that the Kingdom of Bahrain will grant Saudi Arabia sovereignty over subscribers data held by Saudi companies in cloud computing centers based in Bahrain. The Kingdom of Bahrain will grant Saudi Arabia partnership of the International Sea Air Cargo Services Center in Bahrain, allowing Saudi companies based in Bahrain the opportunity to apply for operator accreditation and a range of user privileges. Additionally, to further boost bilateral cooperation, the following MOUs and executive programs were signed. An MOU on cybersecurity cooperation, the memorandum will enhance bilateral cybersecurity cooperation and develop the capabilities of both kingdoms in facing cyber threats. The MOU was signed by Bahrain's National Cybersecurity Center CEO, His Excellency Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, and Saudi Arabia's National Cybersecurity Authority Governor, His Excellency Engineer Majid bin Mohammed Al Mazid. An MOU on the protection of intellectual property rights. The MOU will facilitate expertise exchange relating to intellectual property systems and policies. The MOU was signed by Bahrain's Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, His Excellency Zayn Dizayani, and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's Minister of Commerce and Acting Minister of Media, His Excellency Dr. Majid bin Abdullah Al Qasabi. An executive program on standardization. The program consolidates standardization between the two kingdoms to be reflected in intra-regional trade and technical regulations and requirements. The program was signed by Bahrain's Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, His Excellency Zayn Dizayani, and Saudi Arabia's Governor of the Saudi Standards Meteorology and Quality Organization, His Excellency Dr. Saad bin Uthman Al Qasabi. An executive program on implementing technical cooperation on conformity assessment procedures for biodegradable plastic products. The program will enable suppliers and manufacturers in Bahrain to align conformity assessment procedures for biodegradable plastic products with those applied in Saudi Arabia. The program was signed by Bahrain's Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, CEO of the Supreme Council for the Environment, His Excellency Dr. Mohammed bin Barak bin Dana, and Saudi Arabia's Governor of the Saudi Standards, Metrology and Quality Organization, His Excellency Dr. Saad bin Uthman Al Qasabi. Attorney General Dr. Ali bin Fadl Bu'ainain described protection of human rights as a basic foundation for achieving development in its various aspects. Marking the Human Rights Day, he pointed out that Universal Declaration of Human Rights, with its high values and noble goals, represents an important development in human history. He added that the Kingdom of Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, is rich in pioneering human rights, achievements and public freedoms. He noted that the Kingdom has become a model that enjoys international praise and appreciation with the availability of national human rights, monitoring and judicial mechanisms that aim to protect human rights in the criminal justice system. The Attorney General affirmed synergized judicial efforts to cope with the Kingdom's future vision to promote human rights. He cited steps taken in this respect to ensure justice and enforcement of the law. He also pointed out measures taken to enhance the Kingdom's honorable record in protecting the children's right and enforcing the law on restorative justice for children and their protection from maltreatment. 
Amendment. He added that the public prosecution was also keen on the effective implementation of the restorative justice system introduced by the Bahraini legislation, which are based on compensating the victim, removing the damages arising from the crime, and rehabilitating and reforming the offender to return to a useful member of the society. The Attorney General also pointed out the alternative penalties and procedures law being one of Bahrain's most prominent legislative achievements in the human rights field. The law is also regarded as a significant shift in the punitive policy to a broader scope by going beyond the painful meaning of restricting freedom to another type of penalty that can correct and guide the behavior of the convict, commensurate with his personal or health conditions without pre prejudice to the rights of the victim and the purpose of justice. The Ministry of Health has announced that a case of the Omicron variant has been detected in Bahrain and an individual arriving in the kingdom from abroad. The ministry stated that all necessary mitigation protocols and precautions have been taken, including the isolation and precautionary quarantine of the active case of the variant. The ministry noted that the case did not have any local contact and was in isolation upon arrival. In line with the directives of the cabinet and the government executive committee, the ministry affirmed that it will continue to monitor the global situation and will take all necessary measures to protect public health. The Ministry of Health stressed the importance of adhering to all precautionary health measures issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus and urged all to get vaccinated and receive their booster shot. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,192,110 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,164,880 had taken the second, and 674,056 had taken the booster dose. The Ministry renewed this call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccine. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 311 with 55 recoveries, 33 registered new cases and no deaths. 11 of the new registered cases were expatriates, 16 were contacts of active cases and 6 were travel related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.